So our theme for the month is the present of presence. And the sub theme for today is presence is greater than the problem. Imagine a little math equation alligator thing. Presence is greater than the problem. I was thinking about that uh, that saying attributed to um, Albert Einstein, and this is this is not a direct quote. This is a well, because also the internet is not clear about what the direct quote is. But anyway, we're going to go with a version of inspired by, <laughs> which is that we cannot solve a problem with the same thought or brains that caused it. When I've also heard it say the same consciousness, which is exactly where I want to go with that, because we, you know, if we got ourselves into this problem, usually the 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 brain or the thought process that got us under the problem probably can't find the solution because they wouldn't have got us into the problem in the first place. Hmm. I think that might be actually what Albert Einstein was trying to say about that. But I would like to add that while sometimes you need to phone a friend to find the solution or my friend Google and YouTube can help me fix a lot of things because that's a level of knowing beyond what I had. But some problems, the spiritual type problems, require a consciousness rising, which may or may not require phoning a friend or asking YouTube. Sometimes it does require phoning a friend because you need someone to help you like step into that, release whatever that is. That's why we have spiritual community. But I believe that many of our internal or spiritual hiccups, problems can be solved with the same brain, but with a rise in consciousness. And I also do believe that most of the world's problems are, uh, a, are have spiritual solutions, which would also require a rise in consciousness. That's another talk for another day. And I have an example about how tuning in can change. So a number of years ago, uh, my sister came to me complaining of some pretty serious pain in her um, ab abdomen area. And uh, I was like, it's so hard to know what, what, what do you do? Right. So I said, okay, ask your inner wisdom, pause and ask your inner wisdom. What is the solution? Do you need to go to the hospital? Do you need some medicine? Ask your inner wisdom because it's really hard to know what's the best, what to do. She's like, okay. So she stopped and she breathed and she breathed. And I saw her body relax. And she said, I don't know why, but I got an image of a heat pack. Okay, I like that solution. Uh, <laughs> so she got the heat pack and she put it on her and lo and behold, things resolved themselves in a very uh, simple and straightforward manner and we won't get into the details, but you can guess. So the answer did not require going to the doctor or the hospital, or any of that. It required the inner wisdom. Sometimes the inner wisdom is that you need to go to the hospital. I'm not saying that. But when we stop and we can come into alignment with beyond the panic. So really my original talk was the problem presence is bigger than the panic, but I thought problem was a little nicer, but it's both, right? Presence is better, is bigger than the panic. Even when being chased or followed by a moose, I would say that presence and wisdom is more efficient in solving your problem than panic.
And so this is why we're here. This is why we engage in spiritual practice. This is why we have a community is to build the highway of our neurons to get to presence instead of panic. There might have been a time when my sister came to me with that problem and I didn't didn't say, well, what does your inner wisdom say you need to do? And that would have required been a lot more complicated solution. Which would have required a lot more of our day and a lot more doctor's bills, and a lot more complication. So when you build building the inner those pathways to say there is a spiritual solution let's stop and tune in what is really required in this moment so part of presence is the pause presence is also opening our awareness to what is happening in the now that's why we practice that in the meditation you know, when we ground into what our body is and what's going on in our body, that is a common technique for people who have anxiety uh, to get them grounded in their body. But it's a great tool, even if we're not having that feeling, to be like, in this moment, my pinky toe is warm or cold. And it helps just break open the clouds a little bit to see the the bigger truth instead of the the chaos so when we bring ourselves into the happening what's happening in the now we move past our assumptions or desires about the now how many of you have had frustrations about things not being the way that you expected them or wanted them to be Yes. Okay. I see a couple of grins. So that must be that some of you relate to that experience. <laughs> and it's okay. I'm not saying it's not okay. To, I mean, like you have feelings, have your feelings, get them out, and then you can get on with it. Right. But that's part of being present in the now, right. Instead of being like, okay, you know, let's not talk about 10 years later and be like, you know, that time when that happened, I was really upset about it and still being upset about it. That's not helpful. So let's be present in the now. So a friend of mine this week shared about how she's she's a mental health professional and she says, I can feel the depression coming and yet, and I know the tools and yet I can still feel it coming. And I thought that that was a, a beautiful sharing partly because the vulnerability and the willing to bring these issues out in a public way, I think helps other people be able to not have shame about it, which is wonderful. But also it, it shows how, first of all, she's aware that it's happening as it's happening. So that's a wonderful thing as far as presence, presence is concerned, because instead of like figuring it out three weeks later and being on the roller coaster. So like she knows it's happening as it's happening. I think that that is, great you know because sometimes it's, you can't get ahead of it but at least you know it's happening is it happening and that gives her the opportunity to try on her tools and to ask for support from her community and to do whatever practice she needs to do but part of that vulnerability i love that uh just because lots of people don't want to talk about these things but they don't know that they can or they don't know that's what's going on. And even if we have the tools or we know how it works, it doesn't mean that we get it right every time, right? Oh, so that helps us like, let it be okay that, you know, sometimes we mess it up and then we just turn around, come back. It's okay. Because presence is still greater than the problem. And it may take more than this now moment. But there's other ways that showing up present in the now moment is a gift. Like when we were on our hike this week, I believe it was Nancy who saw them first. She looks out over the, which is not something you'd expect, but there she goes. She goes, 
hey, there's belugas out there. You have to be looking in the, you have to be noticing to notice these things because they're not, they're not big and showy like some whales. <laughs> So you have to be paying, sort of paying attention enough and being willing to see. And so you have to be present and, and you can easily be distracted by all the other things and not notice. And so there's something about a being open and being, uh, creating space that's really beautiful and powerful about being present. I want to revisit a quote from Myrtle Fillmore that we I, I read on the first Sunday of this uh, theme. This is from How to Let God Help You, which your version of it might look totally different. There's many different covers. I just want to come in and have a visit with you. Let us forget all that has pressed itself in upon us to make us sometimes feel that God the good is not all in all. Here in the silence, we shall know the presence of God and see clearly just how we are to go about living the life that God is giving us so we may bring forth the order, beauty, and freedom that God has planned and that is now awaiting our understanding use. Here in the silence, just come in and be and notice and be. So how do we activate our presence tools, right? So one thing is that exercise we did at the beginning of the meditation where we notice maybe this another popular one, the small of your back. How's your the small of your back? Is it leaning against a chair? Is it warm? Is it cool? And these exercises of just noticing your body help you come into the present moment. I think that there's a great value in a kinesthetic release sometimes. If you are finding yourself stuck in the problem, and your consciousness is stuck in the problem, maybe you just need to do one of these. Because <laughs> now you jiggle things around a bit, sort of like a snow globe, see if the snow lands somewhere else. Maybe it's a walk, maybe it's something a little more uh, organized than that, but maybe it is that. You just, you know, kind of do a Kermit the Frog um, and shake it out. Oh, give yourself a different perspective. Go make yourself a cup of tea. Allow yourself space to come into the higher consciousness. And of course, always one of our big tools is the meditation and prayer practice that hopefully we engage in a regular basis because that is how we grow the neural pathways to move away from defaulting to panic to moving, to defaulting, to presence. I don't know about you, but I have definitely had times where very quick and precise action was required in response to whatever was happening. But even in those moments, it wasn't a freak out. It was super focused, like super grounded, time slowed down. Ever had that experience? Maybe when you're slipping on ice or other, you know, other moments. Uh, and it's just, you're just super present. We can practice being in the presence. So that becomes our all the time default. Good idea. Yes. Yes. It's way more fun than panic. Panic is like does all sort, you know, all that adrenaline and everything. It doesn't do. It's not good to have it running through your body all the time. So 
to bring it all back around. The presence, the present of presence. We're not going to do a tongue twister next month. The present of presence is that practicing presence really is the solution to the problem. The rising of our consciousness is the solution to the problem. And isn't it great to know that we have that solution right here, right now. 